But do you know what's never happened? The state government has never actually sat down and had the conversation with Redlands community or with the, the Southern North Bay Island community to actually plan what is their responsibility. And I don't walk away from the fact that the island problems were created. It was like a small snowball at the top of the hill. It started back in the 70s when the Conservative government, the Joe government, I acknowledge that, allowed the development of the islands and basically they laid an invisible grid map over all the islands and let the developers run amok and they developed this island, but with a bridge. So the, the solution was actually no, part of the whole program. So It is something I've acknowledged uh, numerous times in the past, uh, but you're right, it, it started back then that sub subsequent governments have never actually done it. It's all been a bit of band-aid, it's been a bit of council frittering around the edges and it's gone nowhere. What needs to happen, I've said this in the past when I was on council, that the state, the council, and if we can, the federal government need to all come together, and David mentioned when he ran, that the, the federal government, then the, uh, the, the uh, Andrew Lamingans, the LNP member for Bowman, actually put some money on the table from, were they successful, uh, for uh, the Southern North Bay Islands to actually work on those problems. So, yes, we need to actually bring the state to the table and we need to work on what is the long-term plan. The short bar route is a band-aid for two islands, I believe, and a very expensive band-aid. It's $6 million on the clay, it's 20-odd million here, and it only resolves part of the problem. It's not going to improve your life. What will improve your life is a good, you know, a, a addressing of the cost of living pressures right across the board, and that's what LNP promises through our five point plan. It also needs to be the long-term view. When the islands are full, right, when there is, you know, th this, this number of people here on the islands of 20, 22,000-ish people, when they're all here, what does the transport look like? What does the employment look like? What does the socioeconomic profile look like? What are all of those things going to, to look like? How are they going to happen? And you need to actually make that, that now. You need to start planning that. And council can't do it. I know they've got their 2030 vision, but honestly, you might as well throw it out the bloody window. If there are that many reports and plans in that bloody council. <laughs> Don't get me started. But really, the state government does need to step up to the plate. We need to actually address a whole range of things, because there's no simple fix. Recognise and acknowledge that Council has done some planning. But this 2030 stuff, that's rubbish. That is absolute rubbish. The state government needs to buy into the argument. They need to engage with the community and they need to decide, OK, at some point in time there will be potentially 20 plus thousand people living out here. There are 11,000 properties on these islands that are viable, plus or minus a few. If each one of them has a car on the big island, we end up with 10,000 cars looking for a home. And that's how I came with that 10,000 number, which I've been ridiculed with ever since. But the state government needs to buy in. They need to be at that table and have that discussion. And whether or not long term it's a bridge or a barge or a tunnel or God knows what it might be, the state government needs to set that agenda and it needs to work with council and it needs to put some timelines in place. This 2030, you know, that's, that's a rubbish plan. Council's got more plans than enough. If they spend half the money on reports, consultation and planning documents, that if they spent all that money on roads, I reckon all your roads would be sealed by now. Um, and I think that's covered... Actually, that's a very good point. I represented Victoria Point, Kuchi Mudlow Island, and you saw it walked away from the islands. But what I can tell you is that in the nine years that I was there, on at least a half a dozen occasions, the, the principle of metered parking and paid parking at Wynum Creek came up from the officers, up through the ranks. I can assure you I opposed it each and every time because I believed it was discriminatory. This remote parking idea has come up since my departure from council. So this is kind of a new, a, a new mythical dream they've put up. But I have never, ever walked away from my responsibility. But I do represent Victoria Point, Kuchimunlo Island. And if you look at the achievements there by comparison, 
Maybe you need to look to your councillor and your representation at that level as opposed to having a shot at me. My responsibility now as a state member is the entirety of Redlands, and that is these islands. And these islands are the focus of my attention. I probably spend about 80, 20, 80% 80 of my time is around island-related issues, island-related challenges and problems. And I'm not, I'm not upset by that, I'm not troubled by that, but it's just the level of commitment that I need to have to the Bay Islands. Uh, that's important we address the longer term big picture. We have to look at 20,000 people here on the islands because that's the projection. We have to work out how we resolve their parking, resolve the transport, resolve the health, resolve the education and all of the other related issues. Tourism is a wonderful thing. It's, it's part of our four pillars where we recognise tourism as one of the key pillars in our economy. But can I tell you, until we get all of the other things right, you don't need weekenders coming here. I know that there is great opportunities and lots to do when you get here, but you've got to make that entry point more appealing before you then come to the island. But there are you know, opportunities for ecotourism, and they will deliver themselves. There is already a vibrant little you know, B&B uh, uh, &B and homestays here on the island that are working and are viable, and that will continue to grow. What you need is actually a council that doesn't frustrate that process. This council, and there's some glaring examples on Russell Island, and I know they exist here, where people have lost confidence in actually wanting to invest in the islands. You've got people uh, like uh, over on Russell Island who wanted to build a resort. It was an eco-resort. It was going to provide jobs, opportunity on the islands. It was going to teach people catering and hospitality and that, that sort of industry. It was going to have a golf course. And this council just frustrated it and frustrated it to a point where it was no longer viable. The shopping centre uh, on Russell Island and the same here, the shopping precincts that you have, they enabled you to actually live on the islands rather than be reliant on the mainland. But this council has continued to frustrate it. When people come up with business opportunities, the council has a handbook, and I know because I fought the handbook every day I was there, it tells you how to stop things happening rather than, you know, how can we advantage this? How can we help this along? How can we encourage this injection of capital into a community? How can we create those opportunities for islanders to live and work on the island? So it's, it's largely a council issue, but I think that...